the super heavy booster, gliding down Extra into the chopstick down. arms once again. Oh my god. What you just witnessed with B-15 is nothing short of spectacular. A testament to the 8th flight of SpaceX's Starship. But of course, we can't ignore the issues with S-34. There's a lot to break down. So how did the latest flight unfold? What went wrong and why? Get ready, because this is shaping up to be one of the most important episodes of the month on Great SpaceX. Yesterday at Starbase, excitement was in the air as all eyes were on Starship S-34 and Super Heavy B-15. In less than 10 minutes, the flight delivered stunning results. B-15 successfully landed on Mechazilla's arms while S-34's engines encountered issues, leading to a loss of control. For B-15, the journey was mostly smooth, though not without problems. Two engines failed to fire during the boostback burn, and during the landing burn, only one of the two reignited. This issue seems similar to the previous flight, where SpaceX identified the cause as a low power condition in the igniter system. It appears the fix wasn't enough, leading to the same problem occurring again. Meanwhile, S-34's situation looked eerily familiar as well. Based on initial observations, the likely cause was excessive pressure leading to leaks and fire, which damaged the engines. When cameras zoomed into S-34's engine bay, small fires were visible in two of the vacuum engines. Another video from Mission Control showed an RVAC engine explosion, suggesting that a thrust imbalance may have contributed to S-34's rapid unscheduled disassembly. A potential cause could be the new RVAC feed lines. SpaceX had previously stated that they had improved the venting and fire suppression systems, yet these enhancements were not enough to prevent the failure. Following the incident, SpaceX took to X to provide an update. During Starship's ascent burn, the vehicle experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly and contact was lost. Our team immediately began coordination with safety officials to implement pre-planned contingency responses. We will review the data from today's flight test to better understand the root cause. These are the key takeaways from the flight, though we'll need further updates from SpaceX to get a clearer picture. Now, let's go over the entire flight to gain a better perspective, because despite the setbacks, this launch marked significant milestones. As usual, fuel loading went smoothly and followed the planned timeline. The Starbase launch site was engulfed in intense venting, and frost formed on both stages of the rocket. At exactly 5.30 p.m. Central, Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines roared to life, generating over 7,000 tons of thrust at liftoff. The rocket cleared max Q, and at T plus 2 minutes and 33 seconds, second engine cutoff occurred, shutting down the outer and middle ring of B-15's engines while leaving three center engines active. Hot staging followed, successfully igniting S-34's six engines for stage separation. However, as previously mentioned, engine failures soon became evident. Instead of the one like in Flight 7, this time, two engines failed to restart. Fortunately, the booster still retained enough thrust to continue its controlled descent. At T plus 3 minutes and 39 seconds, B-15 shut down its middle engines, and at T plus 4 minutes and 6 seconds, the inner engines followed, putting the booster into transonic descent. The hot staging ring was jettisoned at T plus 5 minutes and 9 seconds, marking another smooth step in the process. Then came one of the most exciting moments, the booster's return. At T plus 6 minutes and 34 seconds, B-15 was only 1 kilometer away from the tower, traveling at 1,150 kilometers per hour when the landing burn began. Unfortunately, due to the earlier boost back burn issues, only one of the two middle ring engines reignited. However, the good news was that one did successfully re-engage, similar to what happened during Flight 7. With 12 engines firing, B-15 rapidly decelerated. At T plus 6 minutes and 41 seconds, the middle engines shut down, leaving three inner gimbal engines to steer and finalize the landing. By T plus 6 minutes and 48 seconds, the booster and tower were visible in the same frame, a moment of pure adrenaline. Below, the chopsticks opened to catch the rocket, and at T plus 6 minutes and 55 seconds, B-15 made contact. Within seconds, the chopsticks closed in, securing the booster. At T plus 7 minutes and 2 seconds, B-15's landing pins locked onto the chopstick rails, signaling a successful catch. This marks the third time SpaceX has successfully landed a booster using Mechazilla and the second consecutive success. It's becoming routine, a testament to SpaceX's rapid progress. 
B-15 will likely return to the production site soon for refurbishment, making room for the next launch preparation. But while the booster's landing was a huge success, S-34's fate wasn't as fortunate. After several minutes in flight, at T plus 8 minutes and 5 seconds, the first vacuum engine shut down, following shortly by the three inner engines. Losing its thrust balance, S-34 began to spin out of control, evident from the onboard camera views. By T plus 9 minutes, the signal was lost, briefly returning for a few seconds before cutting out completely at T plus 9 minutes and 13 seconds. With such an issue, hopes for continued flight were slim. It appears that the flight termination system was triggered again, leading to an explosion. Reports indicate that the fireball was visible from Cape Canaveral, Florida, and burning debris was observed over the Dominican Republic and the Bahamas. So another incredible Starship flight comes to an end, filled with both successes and challenges. As SpaceX emphasized, as always, success comes from what we learn, and today's flight will offer additional lessons to improve Starship's reliability. Failures aren't setbacks, they're stepping stones. Each flight brings vital data paving the way for a fully operational Starship. So if you still believe in SpaceX's vision, show your support. Type never give up in the comment section down below, like the video, and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's groundbreaking journey. Now it's time to look ahead to what comes next. With S-34's failure, an investigation is almost certainly required. However, since the issue seems similar to Flight 7, the review process may be shorter than last time. SpaceX engineers now have more experience with this type of failure, which could streamline troubleshooting and accelerate the path to the next launch. One factor that may cause delays is the aftermath of the flight. A major concern is where the debris has fallen and who may be affected. The extent of the impact on populated areas and airspace regulations will be key in determining how soon Flight 9 can proceed. If authorities require an extended review of debris handling and safety protocols, it could push back the timeline. With the current outcome, it is likely that Flight 9 will still need to land in the ocean rather than attempting a catch with Mechazilla. This means that the first ship-catching test may not happen until Flight 10 or later. On a positive note, SpaceX has made major strides in booster recovery. The Super Heavy Catch mechanism is now proving to be consistent and reliable, allowing the team to shift focus toward fixing the ship's issues for the next test. In terms of hardware progress, B-16 is currently undergoing cryogenic testing, while Starship S-35 has completed production and is ready for testing. Once B-16 completes its tests, it'll likely be rolled out for more advanced evaluations, while S-35 will remain at Massey for further preparations. If the investigation wraps up quickly and testing stays on schedule, we might see the next flight as early as April. Do you think that's possible? Let me know with a yes or no in the comments down below. And for our final piece of news today, let's turn our attention to China and its latest remote sensing satellite launch, a mission that underscores the country's growing ambitions in space. On the 27th of February at 2.08 a.m. Eastern, China successfully launched a Long March 2C rocket from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, carrying a pair of remote sensing satellites known as Superview NEO-1. These satellites have now joined China's commercial high-resolution remote sensing constellation operating in low Earth orbit at an altitude of approximately 500 kilometers. Shortly after liftoff, the mission was declared a success. However, details about the specific purpose of the satellites remain undisclosed. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC, the primary contractor for China's space program, described the payload as part of the China Suwei New Generation Commercial Remote Sensing Satellite System. This system is designed to support remote sensing applications such as mapping, surveillance, and imaging, advancing China's high-resolution agile imaging satellite technology. According to CASC's official statement, the newly launched satellites possess ultra-high-resolution, high-agility, high-positioning accuracy, and high-capacity, high-performance data transmission capabilities. Their overall performance metrics are reportedly on par with international advanced standards, strengthening China's position in the global commercial remote sensing satellite market. The previous pair of satellites launched by China in November of 2024 featured high-resolution synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, technology, a capability that allows for detailed imaging even in poor weather conditions or darkness. 
This suggests a pattern of strategic expansion in China's Earth observation capabilities. However, despite the mission's declared success, there are already signs of potential issues. Observers have noted that insulation tiles from the rocket's upper stage and payload section appeared to have fallen off during ascent. This is not the first time such an issue has occurred in a Chinese rocket launch, raising questions about the reliability and durability of China's launch vehicles. As of now, CASC has not provided any updates regarding this anomaly. With this latest launch, China has now completed nine successful orbital launches in 2025. After falling short of its goal of 100 launches in 2024, the country is now pushing aggressively to reach that milestone this year. This will require a significant acceleration in both government-backed and private sector spaceflight efforts. China's recent surge in space activity presents a major challenge to other spacefaring nations, particularly the United States. The country has dramatically increased its launch frequency in recent years, expanding into a wide range of space missions. Beyond remote sensing satellites, China has ambitious plans for space station operations, lunar exploration, asteroid missions, and even Mars projects. These developments signal a strong commitment to becoming a dominant force in space exploration. That being said, China still lags behind in certain key areas, particularly in reusability, cost efficiency, and launch cadence, all areas where SpaceX continues to excel. Last year, SpaceX alone launched 138 missions. That's over double China's entire national effort of 68. The private spaceflight industry in the United States led by SpaceX remains far ahead in technological advancements, reusability, and overall launch efficiency. So while China is making bold strides, the U.S. space industry still leads the race for now. The real question is, how will American space organizations respond to China's rapid advancements? Let's wait and see how NASA, SpaceX, and other key players push forward after this latest update from China. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.